Hello friends, welcome to another video. This video is going to be about something called rod ratio and that's best explained when I actually use a con rod uh, and a crankshaft to show you what is meant by rod ratio. So over here you can see how the crank radius is measured, which is the center line of the Conrad journal on the left and the center line of the crankshaft itself. In this case that's 42 millimeters. You multiply that by 2 and you end up with a stroke of 84 millimeters for this crankshaft. So the rod is measured from the crank journal center line to the piston pin center line in this case that's 135 millimeters which is um, the most common length in, in m50 motors the 2.5 non vanals the 2.8 and the 3 liter all have 135 millimeter rods the tu 2.5 actually had 140 millimeter rods um, and the euro s50 at 142 the 3.2 has a 139 millimeter and so does the s54 so you get the rod ratio by taking the cone rod length in this case 135 and you take the stroke of the crankshaft you divide the cone rod length by the stroke of the crankshaft and in this case you'll end up with a rod ratio of 1.6 so for the 2.5 non venos you have a 1.82 rod ratio for the 2.5 tu 1.86 the 3 liter is 1.5 and if we go to the m engines it's a 165 for the 3 liter and a 1.4 for the 3.2s including the s54 but the deck height also matters so the deck height of the motor is basically where the cylinder head starts measure to uh, the center line of the crank of course i know you don't use a tape measure for that i know all that it's just uh, to indicate what we're talking about to the people that have no idea what deck height means it's basically the center line of the crankshaft to um, where the cylinder head meets the block so if you can take a look here at this uh, chevrolet small block you can see that it's uh, roughly around 23 centimeters. That's how you measure it on a V8, of course. Um, and that's um, a little taller deck than the 21 uh, centimeters on the M50. Uh, a really old engine, but it's uh, never been apart since uh, 1972. And here you can see the same thing uh, on the BMW M60. As you can see that uh, deck height is uh, little less than the Chevrolet motor. So what it basically means is the ratio, so the correlation between the length of the con rod and the stroke of the crankshaft. Um, I'm sure everybody has heard of the term stroker, which is a common term for uh, increasing the stroke of an existing motor. Um, and we're gonna talk about the um, pros and cons of doing that. Um, so we've determined um, three very important things. One, of course, is the uh, stroke of the crankshaft. The other one is the length of the con rod. And the third one is the deck height. Uh, deck height is I, basically impossible to change. Like on American motors, you can buy different deck height uh, motors. So you can buy a uh, four inch dot 125 height uh, for an LS or a small block. Um, that's of course, uh, not possible with lots of other motors. Maybe it's uh, possible with some billet RB or 2J or something. I'm not really 100% sure um, about those motors. Never work with them. But uh, we do work a lot with BMW M50s. And I always have um, a very specific way of building them. And a lot of people ask me questions about it. Because the way I build them is not how most people build them. Um, there's uh, Before we go into the rod ratio thing. Regarding the M50, I think um, you really need to build them uh, to put boost on them or to build them into a drift motor with high RPM or nitrous or something like that. Not because they're bad motors, but because the design of them is NA. 
Um, the deck height is very typical for an NA motor. Um, and like I said, you can't really change the deck height. And the other thing is the piston uh, gap uh, or the piston ring gaps, um, which need to be uh, larger. The gap needs to be larger for a turbo motor. And um, the problem that you're going to run into if you don't correctly gap the piston rings is that the ring land is going to explode because that piston ring is going to close and the two ends are going to meet each other and they have nowhere to go and it's going to explode the piston. As you can see in this picture, it's very, very common for that stuff to happen. I hope the audio is good for you guys. It's storming like crazy over here. Um, so, um, and the other thing is that because it's a short deck motor, they usually become ovalized because of that actual Conrod angle that we're going to talk about. So if you take 10 M50 turbos um, and you measure the bore, uh, then most of them are not round anymore. They become oval. And we're going to find out uh, in a little while in this video why that is. But most of them are, so you need to overbore them. If you overbore them, you need different pistons. You also want to get different pistons because you want to lower the compression of the motor. I usually go to 9.5, 9.6 because then you still have uh, a really good throttle response, a really good turbo response If with a little bit cheaper turbo. A lot of guys drop the compression ratio really far, but then to get really good turbo response, you need to put like a four or 5,000 euro turbo on it. Um, I like to have a little more compression. Uh, that way, if the turbo is not working, if it's not boosting yet, um, you still have uh, some horsepower. If you take um, an eight and a half compression ratio, 2.8 M50, and it's not on boost, it's gonna be a 150 horsepower motor, um, which is not a lot if you have a car that's set up for grip with big tires and all that stuff. So I uh, check the power on my motor, on the sedan, turbo sedan, and that car made 220 horsepower without boost, uh, which means that if the turbo would fall off uh, and you would still have a normal exhaust bath, theoretically, um, you would still have 220 horsepower, which is really nice because in the first and second gear, there's usually not a lot of turbo action going on because the car goes through the revs quite quickly. That's also why I like to run a little heavier clutch and a little heavier uh, flywheel because in the lower gears, the turbo gets more time to spool. So if you have a really light clutch, really light flywheel assembly, the motor will fly through the revs and the turbo will have no time, no matter what turbo you put on it, twin scroll, ball bearing, whatever, it spends so little time in those revs that the turbo doesn't really have time to put in any labor. Uh, all dynographs that people make are, of course, in fourth gear or fifth gear, which is where there's a lot of leverage from the gears on the motor, which means that it doesn't go through the RPM that fast, which means that the turbo has way more time to actually do labor. So a dynograph that looks really good and let the police pass by, probably on their way to something really important. Um, but the dynographs they usually look really good, um, but you should actually dyno a car in first and second and third as well to see how it actually works. Nobody does that because it's not direct drive on most cars. The fourth gear is one-on-one -on -one or the fifth gear is one-on-one -on -one like on BMWs. So you want to uh, dyno it in that gear, um, but that doesn't really represent when you're driving the car because you're also driving the car in first and second and third. And if you see the dyno graph of those uh, uh, gears, it really doesn't work that much. So I like a little bit of RPM. I like a little bit of compression so that motor um, although we don't run a huge amount of power it's very very usable it's almost like a v8 uh, although it costs more than a v8 um, but that's uh, that requires the motor to be uh, really well built and to have everything done correctly if you go cold turkey and you take a junkyard motor you still need to do the ring gaps um, and it's probably going to be overlaid so you're going to get a lot of blow by and the problem with that is, of course, that you're going to get a lot of fuel in the oil and all kinds of stuff and a lot of crankcase pressure. If you go to ethanol, what a lot of people do, um, the ring gaps have a way better chance because there's a lot less uh, combustion, heat. But on ethanol, you're going to have way more blow-by. So if you're running with um, a junkyard motor, unopened motor with standard ring gaps, and your plan is to make that happen because... Uh, you're on ethanol, so you get away with that incorrect ring gap, um, it's going to bite you because you're going to have 
a huge amount of blow-by because of that ethanol. You'd already have blow-by on normal pump gas, but with ethanol it's way worse. So you're going to build up that crank pressure, you're going to push the seals out, it's going to work against the motor, you're going to have way more oil consumption, you're going to have a lot of ethanol in the fuel, which is very, very risky. Uh, it could end your uh, cone rod bearings, your main bearings, everything. So that's kind of the thing. Um, why I say if you run it, uh, build it, you know, ovalized, incorrect ring gap, and you want to really lower the compression with the pistons and not with a really thick head gasket. Some people do that. They run a really big head gasket. It's really silly. Uh, I quoted a German client for a motor a couple of years ago, and they were like, yeah, but I think we were on 10 grand. And there was a guy in Poland who was going to do it for six grand. I was like, okay, great. You know, there's no way I can do that, not building motors for six grand. Um, and a year later or something, that client contacted me that the motor had failed that he got from the Polish guy. And he sent me the pictures and it was horrible. It was horrible. So the guy had stacked two head gaskets on top of each other. And there's always this talk like, yeah, no, it's no problem. It works. My buddy runs this and that power. No problem. But it's all lies. It doesn't work. It's all BS. Um, if the car isn't gripped up, doesn't make any boost, and you just drive it for Instagram, then yeah, maybe it will live for uh, a couple weeks. But if you really work with that car, put some grip in it, put some RPM in it, really make it work uh, with a really good turbo setup, with the correct uh, turbo sizing, it's really not going to work. So don't do that. Don't use a really thick head gasket to lower the compression. It's also going to be the, the path of least resistance. So it's going to have a uh, way harder time staying in place. If you look at the guys from E Street and all those guys that run huge, like 3,000 horsepower 2Js, they don't even have a head gasket. So they just machine, they deck the finish of the block in a the motor, they put some kind of sealant between it, and they run without a gasket. And the reason why is on those powers and uh, that turbo pressure, no head gasket is going to survive, not even a cuttering gasket like we use. So a head gasket is always going to be a weakest link, so you don't want to make it as thick as some guys do just to lower the compression. So that's my TED talk about building M50s. Let's talk about uh, something called rod ratio right now. So the rod ratio um, for turbo motors, it's really important that it's around between uh, 1.6 and 1.7. That's really is the gold standard. Um, so if you take a look at an M50 B25, oh man, the storm is so bad. I hope I can get this right in the video editing. It's like really, my car is swerving. So if you look at the M50 B25, it's going to have, they're all 84 bore and they're all 135 millimeter cone rods, except the 25 non vanals But let's just assume all of them are 135 millimeter cone rod, all the M50, like the 2.5, 2.8, 3 liter. The bore is 84. So. Um, if you have the M50 B25, it's going to have a stroke of 75 and a bore uh, of 84, which means that you end up with a rod ratio of 1.8, which is an excellent rod ratio. That's a really, really, really good rod ratio. If you go to the 2.8, you're stroking it to 2.8, you still keep the 84 millimeter uh, bore. Uh, but you're going to an 84 millimeter stroke as well. So you're increasing the stroke. You're basically, if this is the crankshaft, and you're basically moving the cone rod from here to here. So you're increasing this distance, which means that you're increasing the stroke. You end up with a 1.6 rod ratio, which is really good. And you have a square bore and stroke. So like a 2JZ, a 2JZ is 86 bore, 86 stroke. An M50 B28 is 84 stroke. Um, 84 bore. I really like that. That's really sporty feeling to a motor if you have that what the, what they call a square setup. Of course, another thing you can do is go to a three liter, um, which is uh, the M54 crank. Um, you're going to be increasing the stroke to 89. So you're going to instead of a 75 stroke on the 2.5, you're going to go to 89 stroke, um, and you're going to keep the same bore 84, and you're going to keep the same rod length of 135. Uh, millimeter, but you get a rod ratio of 1.5, which is really not great. The reason why it's really not great is if this is your rod and this is uh, your crankshaft and you're moving that rod further and further out, it's going to get more and more angle. And that angle is the problem because your cylinder wall is always going to be like this. It's always going to be straight compared to the crankshaft. So that piston is want to 
is going to move up against that cylinder wall and it's going to cause a lot of friction it's going to cause a lot of heat and it's going to cause a lot of wear another thing that happens if you have a really low rod ratio is that the angle uh, of the con rod is going to change which is changing the relative height of the con rod so if the con rod is at top that center like this it's at maximum length, it's at on 135 millimeter. Of course, it never really changes length, but that rank length is relative. So it's, it's always relative to the direction of the engine because the piston's going up and down. So that con rod is gonna change the relative height because it's gonna start on 135 and as it moves down, it's gonna become more diagonal and this height decreases. So you go from 135 to 120, 110, 8, 6, and the problem with that is that that's going to accelerate the piston down. So the piston is going to come down because the crankshaft is moving, of course, but it's so it's moving down a certain uh, amount because the crankshaft is moving, but it's moving down faster because the relative rod length is changing. And if you have a really low rod ratio, that effect is going to be stronger because if you have a smaller stroke it means that the con rod is going to stay more upright and the more upright that con rod stays the more force it can also take and the easier it is to transfer that force into the crankshaft without lots of vibrations if I would put this little rod straight up and I would stand on top of it with my uh, 93 uh, kilos or something 90 kilos it's never going to bend if I would weld it to a table on this end and stand here, it's definitely going to bend. So the strength of the rod has a lot to do with the angle that it's making. So if you have a huge stroke, you're going to have more angle on the rod, which means that it's going to have a more hard, hard time uh, to transfer those forces and it's going to bend easier. It's also going to introduce a huge amount of vibration because the connection point of the con rod is further away from the center line of the crankshaft, which is really something you don't want. Another thing is because it makes such an angle, you need to run a relatively tall piston to have some stability. And a tall piston is going to be heavier. Uh, it's going to have more friction. And a lot of people have solutions for all these kinds of things. So they'll move the wrist pin. So your piston... So they'll increase the con rod length and move the wrist pin up in the piston. But the piston, of course, needs to have the same height, needs to end up at the same spot because you have a certain deck height. You can't really change that. So it means that you have less flesh on the piston. And that's for turbo applications. That's not really a great thing. So there's no real solution of running a little bit longer con rods. Um, it's not really uh, something that's viable if you run a lot of boost and stuff. It's also going to be a little bit more expensive because it's a very... Uh, special piston needs to be specially ordered um, so that's what that's what my reasoning is for staying with the 2.8 because you're going to end up with the 1.6 rod ratio which I would say is a low end of an acceptable rod ratio if you look at an RB and a 2JZ they're 1.65 rod ratio which is really good 1.7 would be even better and you can also tell that when the guys uh, with the 2JZ when they start stroking it that's also when the problems come so you can stroke the 2JZ to a 3.4 and if you stroke the 2JZ to a 3.4 uh, you go from an 86 millimeter stroke to a 96 millimeter stroke and of course that's kind of a, a really big step so what's going to happen turn my lights here there's a lot going on here it's like storm all kinds of things so you go from an 86 to a 96 and you go from a 1.65 ratio to a 1.47 rod ratio so you're basically going to a rod ratio that's even worse than an m53 liter so that's not really a great solution you can also tell that the guys that really run lots of boost lots of rpm they're going to stay with the 3 liter on the 2jz because then they still have that 1.65 rod ratio the 2jz has a way higher deck uh, so 270 millimeter versus 210 millimeter deck height um, the deck height on the bmw motors on the na motors is obviously going to be low because a low deck is uh, kind of nice for um, packaging and all kinds of things and on an NA motor, you don't really um, suffer that much from a bad rod ratio. So you can run a less than ideal rod ratio 
uh, and still get away with it without any problems. So you're, when you're starting to build that motor for boost, it should basically have a deck height for boost and it should have a rod ratio for boost, like the 2JZ and like the RB. So a couple of things uh, to keep in mind over here about the rod ratio. Like I said, 1.65 to 1.7 is in my mind an ideal rod ratio. You're working with the cone rod length and you're working with the crank stroke. The deck height is kind of fixed. That's kind of like wherever, like it's not easy to change that unless you have a whole new billet block or somebody casts a whole different motor for you. Um, changing the cone rod length isn't, it's kind of a solution, but it's also limiting the thickness of the piston. It's going to make the piston way more expensive. Uh, the reason why you don't want to go to a rod ratio that's too low is a, more vibrations in the motor. That's also why the three liter oil pumps will fail, the chains will break, because there's way more vibration in the motor. So that 1.5 rod ratio to three liter in my eyes is a little too low for a good turbo application. If you're also doing RPM, of course, if you're limiting the thing to 5,500, that's a different thing, but I want to have a little bit of ammo. I want to rev the thing at least to 7,000. Vibrations, not a great thing. The cone rod angle is going to be uh, incorrect. It's going to be too steep. So it's going to be pushing against the cylinder wall, causing uh, more wear, causing more, e more heat, and causing more friction. So the problem with that uh, is going to be, of course, that you need to cool the car a little bit more and all that stuff. You need to run a taller piston because you need more stability. So if, if, if you look at the skirt of the piston, the piston is going to be a little bit longer. Uh, you can't always fit that in a motor because that's something we didn't talk about. It's not like you could just put anything in anything. If you look at an LS or an M50, everything is really, really close to, to one another. So it's not exactly like you can just do whatever you want, put any piston in there. So you're also limited there. You can't put an unlimited uh, piston skirt uh, on uh, the car. Uh, and if you run a low rod ratio, you're going to be looking at a huge acceleration of the piston. So the piston is going from top dead center all the way to the bottom and it's going to stop and go back. So it's basically constantly slowing down and accelerating and you're slowing it down harder and you're accelerating it harder if you run a low rod ratio. So you're making it hard on your piston. So all of that kind of like contradicts the cheap build thing. So if, if you would run um, the three liter crank as a cheap way to get more displacement and to get a little bit more power, it's really contradicting because you're going to need a really good piston. It's going to ovalize way more, which is already an M50 problem because of the low deck height. Um, and you're going to have more vibration, so you're going to have less uh, reliability. Um, and uh, you will actually need to run a really, really good piston. So it's not really good... It's, this is crazy, guys. There's like so much going on. I hope this audio comes out really, really correct. Um, so if you, if you use this budget solution of stroking it to the maximum size to save some money instead of running a little bit more boost or building the motor or whatever, putting good pistons in, it really contradicts because you can only go to a 3 liter if you have really good expensive pistons and everything in there uh, and if you bore it perfectly and all that stuff. So not really a great idea. I would stick with the 2.8 for the reasons that I mentioned. Um, the rod ratio, keep that in mind. It's actually really, really easy to find. It's fun to play around with. Um, if you go to the extremes, like a Formula One engine, you'll see that the rod ratio will go over two, which means that it has a, a very short uh, stroke, but a, a relatively uh, long rod, which is because those motors do a lot of RPM and those cars are pretty light. So they don't really need a lot of torque. Um, so that's kind of interesting. It's the same with motorcycle motors. Um, so that's really interesting. And I've oversimplified everything a little bit in this video because otherwise it would become way too much to take in. For instance, uh, we've assumed that all the motors are zero deck, which means that the piston comes to uh, the exact same height uh, as, as, as the deck, which isn't always the case. There's uh, applications where the piston sticks out a little bit uh, over the deck. This pistons where uh, situations for the piston stays a little bit lower but just for the sake of uh, this video we've all assumed um, zero deck if you guys have any questions um, just shoot them below uh, that's like um, the best way to ask any questions um, so that's a little something about the rod ratio a little something about the uh, the m50 and stroking it and building it as a turbo motor hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, talk to you later
Don't forget to take a look at our website as well, einzel.nl. We ship worldwide, of course, Wisefab, Feel Suspension, our own brand, Einzel, gearboxes, quick change differentials, axles, all kinds of things. A lot of fabrication components, of course, air jacks, subframes for quick change, you name it. Drop us an email and we'll hook you up.